In this video, we're going to work on some basic problems associated with mechanical waves. So here we have a graphical representation of a wave. What is the amplitude and wavelength of the wave shown below? The amplitude is the distance between the midpoint and the highest point of the wave. So it's from 0 to 3. So in this example, the amplitude is 3 meters. Now to find the wavelength, you could find the distance between the crests of the wave or the distance between the troughs. Or you could find the distance that it takes to complete one cycle. So from here to here. So how many cycles do we have in this wave? So this is one complete cycle. That's two cycles. And that's three cycles. So in three cycles, the wave traveled a distance of 10 meters. So we've got to find the distance it travels in one cycle. So that's going to be 10 meters divided by 3. So the wavelength is going to be 3.33 meters. So at this position is about 3.33. And then here it's 6.67. And then it's going to be 10 meters. Number two, determine the amplitude, period, and frequency of the mechanical wave shown below. So feel free to try this if you want to. So the amplitude is the distance between the midpoint, or the center line, and the crest of the wave. So in this example, we can clearly see that it's 10 meters. So it's basically equal to that number. Now what about the period and the frequency of the wave? The period is the time it takes to make one complete cycle. So notice that the 5 seconds corresponds to the first quarter of the cycle. So at the second quarter, which is here, it's going to be 10 seconds. At the third quarter, it's 15 seconds. And at the full cycle, at the end of it, it's going to be 20 seconds. So the time it takes to make one complete cycle is 20 seconds. The frequency is 1 divided by the period. So it's going to be 1 over 20. So 1 over 20 will give us a frequency of 0 0.05 hertz. And so that's the answer for this problem. So here's another example. Go ahead and calculate the amplitude of this particular mechanical wave. To calculate the amplitude, it's going to be the difference between the highest value and the lowest value divided by 2. So let's say h is the highest value, l is the lowest value. And so it's going to be 12 minus 4 divided by 2. 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the amplitude in this example is 4 meters. Now, the midpoint between 4 and 12 is 8. If you add 12 plus 4, you get 16 divided by 2. That's 8. And as I mentioned before, the amplitude is the distance between the center line and the highest point. So 12 minus 8 is 4 and that will give us the same answer. Now what is the period of this particular wave? So notice that the 6 seconds corresponds to 3 fourths of a cycle, which would basically stop here at the bottom. So if we divide it into 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2, so the quarter cycle would be at 2 seconds, the half cycle would be at 4, and so a full cycle would be 8 seconds. Therefore, the period is 8 seconds. And now we can calculate the frequency. So the frequency is 1 over the period. So that's 1 over 8 seconds. And 1 over 8 will give us a frequency of 0.125 hertz. And so that's how you can calculate the amplitude, the frequency, the wavelength, and the period of a mechanical wave represented by a graph. Number four, a mechanical wave moves in a string with a speed of 125 meters per second. If the frequency of the wave is 250 hertz, what is the wavelength? So how can we find the answer for this problem? The speed of a wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. And so the wave speed is 125 meters per second. We're looking for the wavelength, 
and the frequency is 250 Hertz. So to calculate the wavelength, it's simply the wave speed divided by the frequency. So 125 divided by 250 is 0.5. So it's 0.5 meters. Number five, a two meter long string with a mass of 0.10 kilograms is plucked with a tension force of 500 newtons. What is the linear density of the string? The linear density is simply the mass per unit length. The mass of the string is 0.10 kilograms and the string is two meters long. So 0.10 divided by two will give us a linear density of 0 0.05 kilograms per meter. Now let's draw a picture. So let's say if we have two boundaries and a string is in between them. If we apply a force or a tension force on a string, we can create a wave pattern on a string. And so you might get a wave. And what we need to do in part B is calculate how fast that wave is moving if we pluck it with a given tension force. The velocity of the wave is equal to the square root of the tension force divided by the linear density, the mass per unit length. So in this example, the tension force is 500 newtons, and the linear density is 0 0.05. So 500 divided by 0 0.05, that's 10,000. If we take the square root of that, that will give us a speed of 100 meters per second. So that's the answer to part B. Part C, determine the frequency of the wave if it has a wavelength of 0.25 meters. We know that the wave speed is the wavelength times the frequency. So the frequency has to be the wave speed divided by the wavelength. So it's going to be 100 meters per second divided by a wavelength of 0.25 meters. And so that's going to give us a frequency of 400 hertz. And that's the answer to part C. Number six, a standard wave is moving at 130 meters per second on a 2.5 meter long string. What is the fundamental frequency of this wave? Feel free to try it if you want to. To calculate the fundamental frequency, you can use this equation. It's NV over 2L. Now, n is 1 when dealing with the fundamental frequency. So it's going to be 1 times the wave speed, which is 130 meters per second, and the length of the string is 2.5 meters. So 2 times 2.5 is 5. So it's 130 over 5. So the fundamental frequency is 26 hertz. So that's the answer to part A. Now, part B, what is the frequency of the third harmonic? That's going to be F3. The frequency of the third harmonic is simply three times the fundamental frequency, the fundamental frequency being F1. The second harmonic is F2. The third harmonic, F3, fourth harmonic, F4, and so forth. So the third harmonic is simply three times the fundamental frequency, or three times 26, which is 78 hertz. Now let's move on to part C. How many nodes and antinodes are present in the third in the wave of the third harmonic. So the first harmonic looks like this. So that's F1. The second harmonic looks like that. That's F2. The third harmonic, let me draw that better. That's the third harmonic. So these are the nodes. The third harmonic has four nodes. The antinodes are where you have the maximum displacement, or that's where constructive interference occurs. So there's three antinodes. The nodes occur with destructive interference. That's when the amplitude is zero. So the number of nodes is equal to n plus one. And the number of antinodes is equal to n. So for the third harmonic, n is 3. Notice that 
the antinodes in n are the same. And the number of nodes is 4. It's n plus 1. So if we're dealing with the 7th harmonic, the number of nodes is going to be 7 plus 1. It's going to be 8. The number of antinodes, which I'm going to denote an, that's going to be 7. Now let's move on to part D. What is the frequency of the fifth overtone? You need to know that the first overtone, I'm just going to put OT for overtone, the first overtone corresponds to the second harmonic. The second overtone corresponds to the third harmonic. So the fifth overtone corresponds to the sixth harmonic. So the frequency of the sixth harmonic is going to be six times the fundamental frequency, or six times 26 hertz. And so it's going to be 156 hertz. So that's the frequency of the fifth overtone, which is the sixth harmonic. Now, what is the wavelength of the third overtone? So the third overtone represents the fourth harmonic. So the formula that we can use to calculate the wavelength of the fourth harmonic is this equation. It's going to be 2L over N. So it's twice the length of the string, 2 times 2.5, divided by 4. So it's 5 over 4. So the wavelength of the fourth harmonic, or the third overtone, is 1.25 meters. Now there's another way in which we can calculate it. So we could find the frequency of the fourth harmonic, which is going to be 4 times 26. And that's 104 hertz. And then we could use this equation. The speed is the wavelength times the frequency. So the wavelength, that is the the wavelength of the fourth harmonic is going to be the speed divided by the frequency of the fourth harmonic. So the speed is 130, and the frequency of the fourth harmonic is 104 hertz. So if you take 130 and divide it by 104, it will give you the same answer of 1.25 meters. And so that's it for this video.